Hi, my name is Pieter de Roy. I made a range of clips on CRM in the performing arts, and this is about customer knowledge. This is uh, where you can see the, what the other clips are about, but as I said, customer knowledge. Um, where you um, can see the role of customer knowledge and the importance of customer knowledge is in this CRM canvas, which I showed in the first clip. It is, it is partly related to ICT systems, but not only to ICT systems. And I'll, ex I'll try to explain that. Because when you're thinking about customer knowledge, it's important to think of the five W's. And this is an idea of Peter Verhoef, professor in, in, in uh, Groningen. Um, and he wrote this book in 2016, where he was referring to the five W's of the customer-centric organization. Who's the customer? What's he doing? Where is he using your product? When is he buying or using your product? And what are his reasons for behavior? The why question. And in his book, Peter Verhoef, he combines these five questions with five, let's say, sources of uh, data. So th the, these data can be qualitative, in-depth interviews, for example, can be quantitative, from survey questions, for example, can be transaction or behavioral data from the, the ticketing or ICT system, can be social data from social media, and can be mobile data based on uh, location. And uh, in the book of Peter Verhoef, it becomes clear when you can best use which uh, type of data. And as you can see, in the, in the middle, transaction and behavioral data, they are valid and, and really supportive for many uh, questions, but not all. So especially the why question, if you want to address that question, which is a really relevant question to, uh, to address in, 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 in thinking about uh, CRM, you need other types of uh, sources. Let me tell you and give you some examples about customer knowledge in the performing arts. This is about consumption patterns uh, of Dutch performing arts visitors, where these Dutch performing arts visitors are, in this case, let's say 100%. And you see that uh, a, a large number of people, more than 50%, is only attending a performing arts performance once or twice. And, and as you can also see, there is this small core audience representing in total 15%. And these fi this 15% is attending six times uh, or more. And when you relate that to the number of visits of performing arts, you see that this 15% of this core audience is, is buying most of the tickets. They are buying 44%, almost 50% of all these tickets. Um, I made a PhD study in 2013. This was one of the the main conclusions after talking to 50 uh, customers of uh, uh, a, a theater in, in Tilburg, Theater Tilburg. And I made this division between incidental spectators, attending once or twice, participants, attending three to five times, and core audience. And this core audience was feeling at home in this theater in Tilburg. While the incidental spectators, they made really pragmatic convenience choices. And so these, this core audience was really venue oriented. They were loyal, they were monogamous loyal. They only went to this theater. While the incidental spectators, they were performance oriented and they choose a performance and they actually did not really care where this performance was, in which theater. So there is this difference in, 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 in relationships. So you have this relational focus related to this core audience and the incidental spectators tend to have a transactional focus. So your strategies should be different. So it's, it's important for these incidental spectators to inform these customers, to tempt them, to surprise them. While on the other hand, for the core audience, it's important to pamper them and involve them and create uh, engagement with your organization. Another insight from my PhD study was, um, was these consumption motives. So this is the, the model after talking to 50 uh, customers. And uh, as you can see, there is this division in, in these cultural centered motives on the, other, on, the, on the one hand and with the uh, social motives on the other hand. Let me uh, explain what these motives actually uh, mean. If you look at, at cultural aesthetics, that's the heart. That, that's the main reason why people 
uh, a tent uh, a theater. Yeah? So it should be, there's, it should be uh, beautiful, it should be really nice uh, to see. There is a sculptural reduction or maybe a recreation as you may call it, so it, is, it should be a nice outing, it should be some entertainment. There is this motive of cultural stimulation, sometimes overrated by cultural organizations, but there is a, a group of people who, who, who do want to learn uh, something. And there is this motive which is not really described to the full extent in the literature so far, but it's this the idea of cultural transmission, that parents or grandparents want to involve their children in the cultural world. So when you look at the social motives, first of all there is this, this motive of social attraction, which is a hidden motive. And, and think about uh, you spending your own leisure time you want to meet like-minded people. You want to, lead, you want to meet nice people in your leisure surroundings. Yeah? So that's, that's also valid for performing arts visitors. There is this motive of social distinction, where people want to say, well, I went to this or that performance. This important motive of social bonding, where people want to visit a performing arts performance with a partner or a friend. And there is this motive of social duty, especially for amateur performances when uh, your brother or uncle or sister or whatsoever who uh, is, is, is performing on stage. There are a couple of steps in, in, in CRM uh, analytics. So the, the first question is, is which data should we collect? And then it's, it's, it's important to think about these five W's I showed you earlier. Then it's important to think, okay, how can I collect these data? That's also related to these elements which uh, were in the book of Peter Verhoef. Then it is all about data management, and especially if you look at these IT ICT systems, which are, are used by these uh, professional organizations. Then the next step is data analysis, and it is about reporting. But in, in many cases, it is not as simple uh, as that, because in many cases, customer knowledge is limited due to the ICT structure. In many organizations, customer knowledge, looking at the databases, there are separate silos who are not talking to each other. So there is no single 360 degree customer view. And that's a main challenge for organizations. Um, some organizations, they are trying to work on this and they are trying to, 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 to get rid of these silos. So there are a couple of companies in the Netherlands who uh, assist cultural organizations in, in doing so. So on, 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 the, on the right hand side you see the customer who wants to make use of these, these channels. Um, and on, on, the, on the left hand side you see these different sources, these different sources of customer details, of customer knowledge. But these are silos. So there are companies who are, let's say, trying to, to skip these silos build a CRM engine and to combine all this customer knowledge into bigger and smarter uh, marketing database in order to be able to, to carry out these customer communication programs. When you look at data analysis, actually there are, there are five uh, steps, uh, or not five steps, there are five types of analysis. So the, the, the very important one, the main one is segmentation analysis. And I'll have a, an example uh, on that and also in the next clip uh, around segmentations. But also acquisition analysis, when you want to get new customers. Retention analysis, when you want to keep your customers. Uh, relationship development analysis, so what is the pattern? Do people come back to your organization or not? And, and to what extent do they buy uh, a large number of tickets or maybe a small number of tickets? And there is this effectiveness of uh, customer communication. What, is the, what are the effects of your individual communication campaigns? I'll have some examples uh, about these uh, analyses. This is based on, on eight theatres, on, on customer database of eight theatres in the Netherlands. Three groups, as you can see, incidental spectators, participants and core audience. You see the number of visits in one year, and you also see the, the percentage in the uh, database. This is based on, on one specific year, and in, uh, so this, on, on this one specific year, you can see there is this really small number of core audience members, and this real large number of incidental spectators. 
What you also see is that there is just a small number of people belonging to this core audience group. They represent a relatively large number of ticketing, so around 30%. And in ticket spending, they are really spending a lot more than these incidental spectators. And also customer retention rates, so the, the chance to get back to the uh, organizations are, are much larger from the, for the core audience group. This is another analysis I made for a theater uh, in, in Den Haag. And um, this is not based on one single season, but this, this is just a full customer database based on a couple of years. And what you see then, there is this really large number, almost 60% uh, of people who did not attend the uh, organization previous year. So it, 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 is, it is really worthwhile uh, to understand customer and customer behavior to analyze these customer databases. So the ID, and this is an old ID, to get customers in, to find new customers, to move them up, to sell them more tickets, and to keep them in, to keep them in giving good experiential value. This was a clip around customer knowledge. I have more clips, as you can see, and um, all the best.